Tonight, news at now a typhoon, meanwhile it's quiet elsewhere. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 17th. As we stand down to Code Blue, the two things are active right now. The only named thing active right now is Typhoon Nisa. Now, once again, it is it should also be noted that we are tracking a subtropical depression dubbed M1 by 413 Europe. It currently in the Mediterranean, but however, it has since made landfall over Egypt. In the Atlantic on day 139 of hurricane season, we once again have nothing active as we exit peak season with nothing on the horizon as of this current moment in time. Uh, over in the Eastern Pacific on day 156 of hurricane season, a new area of interest has sprung up over here, currently with a 40% chance of formation according to the National Hurricane Center. Now nothing named is active in this basin for the moment. So the West Pacific sees Nisat, now a typhoon in the South China Sea after traversing just north of the Philippines, currently headed westwards, narrowly missing Hainan and currently headed for Vietnam. To the east of the Philippines though right now is, is a 92W which was newly designated uh, a few hours ago and we have since given it a 40% chance of formation. So up next in the North Indian Ocean a rather wide area of interest is present in the Bay of Bengal. We have upped our chances for the system to 30%. Now we will we can only wait and see what this system does in a few days time. So onto satellite imagery now with the Atlantic uh, up first. Uh, once again devoid of any tropical activity but there is quite the thunderstorm activity over the Caribbean as well as Central and South America all noted to be over land if you wanted to take a look at those flashing yellow dots right there but not anymore our 40% area of interest is barely visible on satellite in the eastern Pacific nothing else is happening over this part of the basin sorry Ethan but your basin sucks right now uh, Nisat is now a typhoon looking rather impressive on satellite as it heads towards the west with 92W looking to be getting its act together as it also traverses westwards towards the Philippines. So if you wanted close-ups on Nisa and 92W, here we go. But our 30% area of interest is also barely visible on satellite over in the Bay of Bengal, but trust me, it's there. Nothing else is happening over the rest of the North Indian Ocean. And briefly, I just want to mention this extratropical low off the coast of Antarctica. Now, according to a local weather station, the pressure for the system remains as a record-breaking 897 millibars, which is the most intense extratropical cyclone ever recorded, su surpassing that of the Brer Storm, which peaked at a pressure of 914 millibars. Now, that is impressive. So according to the JTWC, Typhoon Nisat is expected to turn towards the southwest, narrowly missing Hainan, then turn northwest and strike Vietnam as a minimal tropical storm. More on the system in just a moment. And here you go. So here's a closer look at Typhoon Nisa, currently at 19.7 degrees north and 116.8 degrees east. Currently with a wind speed of 85 miles an hour and a central pressure of 971 millibars. Now once again according to the JTWC's forecast it is expected to move southwest intensifying into a category 2 equivalent typhoon as it does so. After that peak it is expected to weaken back to a category 1 typhoon as it passes really close to Hainan and eventually head back into a tropical storm as it approaches and strikes Vietnam in just over 72 hours from now. So onto the models now, starting once again with Nisat. Now they expect some more strengthening up to around 90 knots, which is in line with the JTWC's forecast, which I just talked about before weakening 
commences for this system. Now this is because shear is expected to be on the uptrend for quite some time. However, both at sea surface temperatures and mid-level relative humidity remain favorable. So 91W is practically gone, but the models expect it to continue for quite some time. Not much of this is expected from this system anyway, with the models barely taking this above 40 knots, mainly due to sheer shooting for the moon. As well as sea surface temperatures, whilst favorable for the moment, will sharply drop in a few days time. And mid-level relative humidity is also not favorable for development. Unfortunately, the graphs for 92W aren't out yet, so I can't go and grab those for this bulletin, but hopefully they'll be available soon. Now, don't forget, you can go to our merch store where you can buy things such as individual animations, mugs, and pillows, which Nathan will proceed to throw one at me in just a moment. Jeez, how many pillows have you thrown? Stop it! Also worth mentioning is our line of still waiting for Hone shirts, marking over 1,000 days of waiting for just one storm that clearly does not want to come out to the party. So moving on, the West Pacific remains piping hot with 29 degree waters with isolated pockets of 30 here, there and everywhere in this basin. The Bay of Bengal remains 29 degrees with a bit of toasty 30 degree waters off the coast of Bangladesh and as I just mentioned there's a pretty wide area of interest uh, occupying most of the Bay of Bengal. Uh, the Arabian Sea remaining largely around 28, looking like the cooler water off Somalia is finally warming up. The tropical Atlantic remains warm with waters reaching 28 degrees in the main development region, and the tropical eastern and central Pacific remaining largely 28 degrees with small dips of 27 degrees here and there. So the Eastern Pacific, Eastern and Central Pacific, excuse me, mostly above average. Uh, the West Pacific also remaining unchanged with warmer than average waters, as is the norm right about now. The Atlantic remaining mostly above. The Bay of Bengal also remains above average. The Arabian Sea is around half and half with above and below. And you can see the La Nina taking back control in the equatorial Eastern Pacific. Oceanic heat content in the Atlantic is making itself known in the Caribbean Sea as well as the main development region as well, uh, slowly gaining a bit of energy in this region of the Atlantic, the main development region. Over in the Northern Pacific, the Western Pacific still remaining full of energy off the eastern coast of the Philippines, but you'll find not as much the further east you go. However, and you'll find that energy becomes less, pre less prevalent as you approach Hawaii and then it completely disappears altogether a few hundred miles south of Baja California. On this day in 1999, the East India Cyclone was wreaking havoc in the Bay of Bengal where it was making landfall as a Category 4 Cyclone. Elsewhere was 27W which would soon become known as Tropical Storm Eve as it crossed over the Philippines. 14L had also just formed in the Atlantic and would soon become Tropical Storm and then Hurricane Jose. And the only named storm active was Hurricane Irene, which had just emerged off the coast of Florida after making landfall uh, there. So that brings an end to another bulletin. Up next in the Atlantic is Lisa followed by Martin. Up next in the Eastern Pacific is Roslyn followed by Seymour. And for the longest time up next in the Central Pacific is still Hone. Up next in the West Pacific is Hai Tang, followed by Naoge. Up next in the North Indian Ocean is Sitrang, followed by Mandus. Bringing things down under, the first name uh, up next in the Australian region is Darien, followed by Eli. Up next in the Southwest Indian is Chinesa, followed by Dingani. And finally, up next in the South Pacific is Harley, followed by Irene. That's all from me for now. We'll see you for another Tropic Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.